Hello again. Today I'm going to uh, wrap up some reflections that we've been doing about Paul's prayers for uh, ancient Christians in the churches that he knew and loved. And our purpose in this has been to get some insight into what we can aspire to, what we should expect to be our experience as Christians and as the Church of Jesus Christ, even in our day. Circumstances very different, of course, but if you can imagine what Paul would pray for us today, and we get insight from that in what he prayed for ancient Christians that he knew and loved. We have discovered Paul praying that our lives will be worthy of the calling that God has extended to us to be his people. Paul has prayed that we would be filled with the knowledge of his will, how we live our lives and what we do with our lives and decisions that we make in our day. And Paul has also prayed that our love would grow more and more for each other, for all people that we meet and interact with, and, of course, for our God himself. For the church in Ephesus, the last of the four that we're going to look at, Paul's prayer is for us to have God's power. I'm going to read from Ephesians 3, verses 14 to 19. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have power to comprehend with all the saints, what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. We need strength in life. We need power in our all of our life, our spiritual life experience, the, the integrated life that we are to live as spirit and as physical beings. Just as much in, as in our bodies, we need strength. We need strength for our spirit, which is just as real as our physical existence. Some of us know what it is like to be in a weakened state. We lack strength. That is true in our spiritual life as well, if we aren't attentive to it. And God wants to strengthen us with his power in our inner being, our most inner self. He feels so strongly that he repeats himself. He, he says it the same, the same thing, and he adds this idea of love strengthened to understand and comprehend the extent of God's love. Love is an important condition for this power. Love is an important element of our life in the Lord. In fact, power and love go together. I think we need to pause and reflect on this, that this is not earthly power. This isn't, this isn't the power that comes from money, from wealth, from a secure future, or uh, power that the state uh, provides, or our personal status, our standing with other people. This is power that comes from God, who is love. And you can't separate God's power from God's love. They're all part of his being, his nature, his character. And the purpose of our having this power is 
to grasp, as Paul says, to understand, to know the full dimensions of Jesus' love. Now, there are two points that I have to make about this, and I'm, I'm going to make these the centerpiece of our, our meditation, our devotion this morning. They, they are they're startling points, and they're bold. One is about power, and the other is about the purpose of Paul's request. My first point is that there is only one kind of power of God, and it's his power. This is not the, um, uh, the low-octane power that Paul is praying for. This is not the calorie-reduced power that Paul is praying for. There is only one power of God. It's his power. Paul says in the opening verses of uh, this letter to Christians in Ephesus that the power that he wants us to know, he talks about our having power earlier in this letter, so he really, really means it. It's the same power that Paul wants for us as the power that brought Jesus back from the dead. And again, that's because there only is one power of God. It is God's power. And Paul's prayer for us, Paul's prayer for Ephesus, is that we have that power, that we be strengthened with that power. There is only one kind of God's power, and he gives it to us. And my second point is that the purpose of our having this power is that we be filled with the fullness of God. Is that too much? Well, if I suggested it, yes. But I have Paul's authority to tell you that. To know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Peter echoes this in one of his letters where he talks about our having what we need to participate with God in the divine nature. And I believe I've got Jesus' authority when he talks to his own father in the great high priestly prayer in John 17, that not only would he and the Father be one, but that his disciples, the church, those who will believe in subsequent generations of the church, would also be one with them. This is not to say that we are little divinities. This is not to say that we are God in any degree. We are his servants, we are his creatures, we are his children. We are not him. But he longs for a relationship with us to the point that he gives us his presence. He fills us with his fullness, not just a taste, not just a drop. That's the extent of his desire for us. That is the extent of what awaits us as his people. That's big. And we need to reflect on it. I'm going to encourage us to reflect on that by closing with this wonderful uh, word of praise that follows immediately upon this prayer. It's almost as though Paul is saying, this is my prayer for you. You think it's too much? Well, Let's turn it over to God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power, here it is again, at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen.
as we work to discover the reality of this in our lives, as you work this through, may God, by his Spirit, make it more and more a reality for you, for all of us. Bye now.